following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark good morning i'm nico dehan welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced natural wild world and we do this uh, so we can recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms and it's a beautiful day here in downtown Clearwater. In fact, 64 degrees, a uh, cold front coming through uh, later today or tomorrow, and probably going to get in the 40s. So uh, kind of a nice change for us here. Always like the cold weather coming in as long as it doesn't stay too long. And the number here is 877-927-6648. Folks, if you've got any uh, suggestions for the show, uh, make a comment or just want to chat a little bit, you can call me at 877-927-6648. You can also email me at nico at tfnn.com. And you can also get a hold of Paige at page at tfnn.com, even though she's not here today. I hope she's doing well. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the holidays are here now and uh, go perhaps going to a lot of parties. You may be entertaining yourself. And this is kind of flu season, but also you need to be aware of a couple of things. And I want to talk about how to avoid getting food poisoning or the stomach flu. And there's four things that you need to watch out for. One is clean air. One is clean foods. You want to make sure the surfaces are clean. And then, of course, that your hands are clean. I'm going to break this down a little bit. Uh, there, this is much simpler than you'd think because everybody uh, that, uh, if, you're, if you're around somebody that has a uh, flu virus and they're vomiting or have diarrhea uh, while you're in the room, that can make the air bad. But otherwise than that, the air is pretty clean. Normally, virus particles uh, uh, settle extremely quickly. And so unless you're there while it's happening before your eyes you're safe from any airborne transmission it's impossible to get sick by breathing the same air as someone with food poisoning or the stomach flu unless like i say they're uh, vomiting right there or you're in the bathroom with them for some odd reason uh the number two is clean foods food is the only way to contract food poisoning and a major method for the stomach flu that's that spreads the stomach flu and there's two major ways to keep yourself safe from this. First of all, wash your fruits and vegetables thoroughly. Wash them in a similar way that you would wash your hands, although without soap, to get rid of any, uh, rid of any possible bacteria or virus particles. Note that it's just like washing your hands. You're washing particles that go down the drain, not killing them. So using hot water or cold water uh, doesn't really make it any more effective at all. Number two is be smart when you cook. Uh, there's a list of high-risk foods uh, uh, on the web. Uh, there's pretty much delicious food on that list, but you should uh, eliminate these on the list and things like, uh, well, just you know, raw foods, uh, touching other foods, things like that, you have to really be aware of. This doesn't mean you eliminate them from your diet. Uh, instead, ensure that your meats and fish, including seafood, uh, like shellfish or oysters, are cooked thoroughly and that you aren't consuming unpastured or questionable dairy. That's a case that uh, Paige might have uh, trouble with. Uh, Non-pasteurized uh, non dairy I think is okay too, as long as it's fresh. It's the freshness of it that really counts for me. And there's no need to be overcautious uh, with uh, dairy products uh, as long as they are fresh. Uh, never prepare food for others until 48 hours after all the symptoms have disappeared. So you, if you know somebody or if you have the flu themselves, don't you or let them prepare any food for you, especially in that, during that time span. 
Number three is the clean surfaces. When you're cooking, sometimes we place high-risk foods like raw meats and other dishes as uh, on the same dishes as cooked food, and we don't want to do that. Uh, you don't want to use the same utensils or handle them in the same way. This is the easy way, easiest way to cross-contaminate one food to another without knowing it. So be sure that you use separate dishes, separate utensils, dealing with those high-risk foods, which are really the raw meats and the shellfish and things like that. Uh, it's also important to thoroughly clean surfaces uh, that a person with a stomach flu or has had any kind of sickness comes in contact with. Uh, yeah, so clean your surfaces. The, uh, the fomites, the, these are the particles that they call that kind of float around and land on things. Uh, they're common on uh, everything in the bathroom, like the toilet, the flushers, the sinks, the countertops, any kind of door handles naturally, bedding and clothing a certain person has worn or during the time that they were sick, be sure to wash those. Any items that they're handling while they were sick, if they vomited anywhere else but the bathroom, such as a bucket near the bed, any object within three feet radius of that point. Uh, and this is important to remember because the three feet is the how far these flu, stomach flu bacteria, when they're released, when they defecate or they vomit, travels about three feet before settling on a surface. So uh, bathroom is really the best place. Uh, make sure you use a bleach cleaning solution. You want your bleach solution to be a strength of about 5,000 parts per million of chlorine. To do that, you need to dilute your stock household bleach normally, which is five to, uh, point, uh, I think it's five and a quarter percent sodium high carbonate. Uh, so a concentrate of 50,000 uh, parts per million that's 10% with water, so you just uh, mix those together. Uh, nine parts to one part bleach, or a quarter cup of bleach and two and a half cups of water. It'll do the same thing. Using more bleach doesn't help to kill anything. It only washes, uh, wastes the bleach, and uh, doesn't taste too good either. Number th uh, four is the clean hands. This is the biggest of them all. Keep your hand clean by far. The, the most precaution you can take is cleaning your hands as often as you can. It's as simple as washing them with soap and water through uh, about 20 seconds it takes. Remember that just like we said with fruits and vegetables, you're washing the particles away down the drain, really not killing them. So uh, using hot water is no more effective than cold water. Also, antibacterial hand, uh, hand sanitizers don't kill the stomach flu virus since it's a virus and not a bacteria. So don't take any shortcuts. Wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds, multiple times during the day, including uh, the time that you're in the bathroom before every meal, blah, 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 things like that. And don't put your hands or near your mouth once you're doing, starting to do things, especially if you've had the flu or you know somebody that has the flu. So, uh, yeah, there's a chronological thing I'm going to go over in the next segment here, but uh, yeah, most of this is pretty common sense, but I think uh, this time of year you see more and more of this uh, with the weather changing too. We have the, the normal common flus just besides the, the stomach flus, and these things kind of apply to that too. So if you're catching a cold and things like that, you need to really be aware. Folks, uh, my Health Signals newsletter is out, and I've got an interesting article here on, uh, let's see, it starts on page 13, and this is uh, about climate uh, fraud and talking about climate change, and there's a whole bunch of things in here from the uh, Canberra Times that shows that how they're fudging all these little things on uh, the different uh, measurements they're taking all over the world and then coming back and fudging some of the materials and they have some documentation here some new articles that kind of dispute what they're saying uh, in these modern times here so stick around uh, and see that on the health signals newsletter also please pick up some primal edge you know the drill here 89 dollars gets you to your door every single month i'll be right back folks you know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is 
is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And welcome back to the show, folks. Number here is 877-927-6648, talking about uh, how to avoid getting food poisoning or the stomach flu. And, of course, the four big things are make sure that you have clean air, clean food, clean surfaces, and your hands are clean. So how long does food poisoning last? Food poisoning tends to be more severe and shorter lived than the stomach flu. On average, fo uh, food poisoning lasts about 24 to 48 hours, well, but it's not uncommon that uh, it lasts up to 72 hours. Here's a timeline. Uh, hour zero, you ingest the food bacteria from eating uh, undercooked meat, unpasteurized dairy, perhaps unwashed fruits or vegetables, or contaminated fish or shellfish. It's, it's possible to contract it from other foods as well, but these four categories make up the majority of the cases. So the first six hours, symptoms begin to appear. Symptoms always uh, include diarrhea, vomiting uh, most of the time, and could also include a fever, nausea, stomach cramps, fatigue, and headaches. Prepare yourself, it's going to be a miserable couple of days, for sure, if you ever had that, you know this. Our hour 7 through 30, the food poisoning is at its maximum. You feel awful, but as long as you're drinking water and not expelling it by way of diarrhea and vomit immediately, you're going to be okay. The first 24 hours are the roughest. So hour 31 through 56, uh, symptoms may still be strong or they may be disappearing. It's, diff it's different in every case. By the end of this period, though, from about 48 hours after you started showing the symptoms, they should be significantly reduced or gone altogether. And after 54 hours and beyond, symptoms are most likely gone at this point. If your symptoms haven't subsided you should, uh, and you still feel like uh, hell in a, a basket, consult your physician for a personalized opinion. They have this kind of timeline here, but I don't think you can really see it that 
it's kind of small here on the thing. But then there's a typical uh, timeline of the flu, which is a little different. So in uh, the hour zero, the one you contracted, you just swallow the, uh, the stomach flu virus from either contaminated food or handling contaminated surfaces and then touching your mouth. So hour 12 through 48, symptoms begin to appear. Just like food poisoning, symptoms uh, almost always include diarrhea and vomiting and could include a fever, nausea, stomach cramps, fatigue, and headaches. Prepare yourself. It's going to be a couple of miserable days. Uh, then uh, hours 49 to 96, so the stomach flu does indeed uh, last a little bit longer. Uh, the stomach flu is at its maximum. You feel bad, but as long as you're drinking water and not expelling it through diarrhea and vomit, uh, immediately you're going to be okay. The first 48 hours are normally the roughest. Then hours 97 to 120. Let me get that up here a little bit higher. Uh, symptoms may still be strong or uh, they might be disappearing. It's different in every case. By the end of this period, though, from about 72 hours after you started showing symptoms, they should be significantly reduced or gone altogether. Then hours 120 and beyond, symptoms are most likely gone at this point, though keep in mind that you're still contagious for about three days after your symptoms disappeared. So continue to be cautious and then disinfect surfaces to ensure the virus disappears from your home completely. If your uh, symptoms haven't subsided and you still feel bad, uh, consult your doctor for a more personalized opinion. So, uh, and again, we have that chart here, but uh, a little small, so not too good. Po uh, food poisoning treatment 101. Number one, stay hydrated. This is really important. Despite the awful feeling of having food poisoning or the stomach flu, the biggest risk is that they actually uh, get you dehydrated. That said, stay hydrated with water. It says here, or Gatorade, and instead of Gatorade, I normally would use uh, coconut water or something like that. Same effect, uh, less chemicals, much better for you. And slowly start to reintroduce food into your diet as you feel comfortable. If you're vomiting excessively, cannot keep any liquids in your systems, you need to get a medical doctor. Food poisoning and stomach flu poses a risk to children, the elderly, and terminally ill people. So if you fall into that category, you need to get in touch with your doctor immediately. The high risks for food, uh, or high risk food for food poisoning and stomach flu are number one, raw and undercooked meat products. Number two, fish and shellfish. Number three, un unpasteurized or expired dairy products like milk, cheese, cream, and eggs. Vegetables and fruits that aren't well washed. And remember what I said in the beginning, when you wash it, you're not really killing the germs, you're just getting rid of the bacteria down the drain. So we have some food poisoning myths and stomach flu myths. Myth is food uh, that causes stomach, uh, or food poisoning, looks and tastes or smell bad. That may not be the case. Most food that cause food poisoning look and smell perfectly normal. So that's not a clue at all. Another myth is food poisoning is a rare condition that happens when you travel overseas. The truth is food poisoning affects one in six Americans every year. And while it's possible to contract food poisoning overseas, the vast majority of cases are at home from the mishandling of food. And the other one is food poisoning is really dangerous. While you feel crappy for a few days, both food poisoning and stomach flu are largely harmless. The biggest risk they pose is dehydration, so always stay, de <laughs> stay hydrated throughout the process. It's impossible to contact, contract food poisoning or the stomach flu in any of these ways, being near or breathing the same air that somebody that has it. I should put these up here, I guess. And uh, walking past a pool of vomit, having sexual relations with an uh, infected person, uh, having a cut in your skin, sitting on a toilet or catching it uh, through your rectum or genitalia, kissing someone who has not yet shown symptoms, and sharing cups or utensils with somebody who has the virus but hasn't shown symptoms. It's not possible to catch it in those ways, it says here. The big four ways are, again, clean air, clean food, clean surfaces, and clean hands. So clean air, stay out of the room when somebody releases the bacteria, when they're sneezing and stuff like that. That's when you can catch it. Clean foods, wash your foods, uh, fruits and vegetables, cook your meats thoroughly, don't allow your... Uh, raw foods, again, to contaminate with uh, your other dishes, uh, your other utensils. Uh, 
clean the surfaces. Remember, clean all the bedding and the clothing used by someone who has the stomach flu or is even has uh, some food poisoning. If they were exposed to anything, they uh, all those things should be washed and use that clean uh, solution, that bleach solution for cleaning surfaces. And the most important action you can take is cleaning your hands. These illnesses only spread through your mouth, so if your food is clean, keep your hands clean. Uh, in case you touch your mouth, you're 100% safe. I would imagine the, the mouth and the nose would be the same thing. So, a little story for you there. Folks, please pick up a Health Signals newsletter. Got a great one out uh, right now for you. Lots of articles in here that you need to really do some research on. It really starts with having a healthy and stress-free free holidays. But there's a lot of good articles in here, and a lot of them are related to... Uh, Today, really, you know, the, the type of season that we're in and what's happening. This is a good article here on uh, the climate change, too, that I was mentioning earlier. Also, uh, please pick up the Health Signals newsletter. Right there. $10 gives you two issues every month. I've got one more coming for the year, and then we start all over again with issue number one. And uh, you can do this all on the TFNN.com website. And remember, folks, you go to TFNN.com and you can get up that primal living, isolated stretching here that we put on every couple of weeks. We put a new one on there. This is called shoulder, uh, shoulder elevation. Really good for your shoulders, triceps, your lats, and your deltoids. Stick around, folks. Got a lot more. I'll be right back. would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
And welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, Nico here. Paige is out today. I uh, hope she's feeling okay. Uh, you know, I'm going on this trip in May. I thought I'd talk about this a little bit while Paige isn't here because uh, I really didn't prepare, prepare a lot for the show and kind of at the last minute I got the call that she wasn't feeling too well. But uh, I'm going to uh, drive uh, to St. Louis, pick up my son, who's flying in uh, there from Detroit, and then we're going on to uh, Vail, Colorado, to meet a researcher uh, that uh, has a lot of experience with Bigfoot. And I've always been interested in Bigfoot. And uh, I've been on the uh, research of this for quite a few years. In the last couple of years, I've really found some really interesting things. And, I'm going to play this little video on here on the Telestrator to show you some of the things that are happening. Now, there, this is deep in the forest, and what you're finding is a lot of what looks like deadfall, these trees. But if you look closely, and a lot of this, you won't be able to see a lot of this, but these trees really are brought in. These are aspen trees, usually. And they're just kind of placed around in different figures, and some of the figures are quite amazing. And there are, are a whole bunch of people saying these are different signs that uh, Bigfoot used to communicate. And this looks, uh, you know, they're just placing little pieces of wood here and things like that. And like I said, these trees are aspen trees. Most of this is in a pine forest or an oak forest. And so these trees are really not different. You'll see them starting to use, see these tree leans that are going up. See these big X's all over the place. These trees, some of them like 100, 100 look at these trees here. They're just going, going up. Some of them are bent. And this is just re really amazing to show you this really isn't tree fall at all. This is not dead fall. Or this is kind of an asterisk type of thing. And you see this often in Bigfoot country. You see the X's all over the place. But look at this. this is, these are jammed in between trees. And some of them are bent into different directions and then kind of stuck underneath another tree. I mean, this is insane. Look at them all up here, almost horizontal. And they just keep going up and up and up. Like I said, some of these things are hundreds and hundreds of feet long. No man could place these in here. And when you go up to them, here's another X there. And a lot of researchers thinking that the X's are kind of warning signs, stay out of our territory. I don't think anybody really knows what it is. But I find this particularly interesting. I think some of the uh, smaller Bigfoots probably travel on these, like maybe a little jungle gym type of thing where they can easily walk and uh, go up. We knew that we know that they do go in trees, and you know Bigfoots are really uh, spotted on every continent in the world except Hawaii. It's the only place no sighting has ever done. But just in the United States alone, this year is over 10,000 different sightings. So I find this very fascinating. Big researchers believe that the Bigfoot has a system of stick structures to communicate with their kind and leave messages to those who are not their kind. And there's uh, lots of expeditions that are going up fi finding these things. Uh, in an article, Stick Structures, Evidence or Controversy by Doran Fisher, a Bigfoot researcher, reports on various stick structures or strange configurations that defy explanation not built by humans or natural means. And you can really see that they're not uh, built by humans because no human could lift these trees, first of all. And they're dragged hundreds and hundreds of feet from there. So you see these things lying uh, on the, um, <clears throat> you see them lying on the ground. Those trees have no stump anywhere near them. Those are all dragged in from there. Look at how busy this place is right here. <clears throat> Pretty amazing thing. And whether you believe in Bigfoot or not, uh, I don't you know, I have this whole theory about belief. It kind of binds you from the truth. So keep an open mind on things and decide things for yourself. But look at all these leans. Look at all these are shoved underneath. Look at this. This is pretty fascinating, I'll tell you. <clears throat> so the guy who's taken these uh, videos is the guy I contacted. I'm going to pay him to spend two days in the woods with my son and myself and him and probably somebody else that goes with him. And we're going to spend two days in the woods in these areas. He's got about five or six locations very much like this that have all these structures. <clears throat> Other interesting thing is when you walk into these forests and you start getting into their territory, you'll start hearing what they call wood knocks. You'll start hearing little howls or hoots. Some of them even mimic uh, other animals like birds and things like that. Uh, don't show themselves too much. <clears throat> That's why it's so hard to see pictures. 
Look at this wood. It's incredible. And I mean, it's almost like a form of art, I would say. Uh, one researcher has a um, theory that it's kind of like autism, that uh, they're very inquisitive, very highly intelligent animals, and they have this autistic side to them that makes them do these kind of things. And most of when you see them in the air, you really see the look at those X's there. They really make a lot of X's. And I don't think tree fall will naturally fall that way. I mean, it's, look at that horizontal and that loop there. That's amazing. This just blows my mind, I'll tell you. So I'm really getting excited about this. I hope my son is too. And of course, we're going to be, uh, besides the guy who is doing this, he's going to, of course, be filming with his great camera. I've got uh, just an iPhone that I'm using, and I've got a gimbal, so stop the shaking. I think my son has a nice single lens reflex. So we've taken plenty of pictures and uh, sound recordings and things like that, and I'm going to report back to you on my findings on this. So uh, hope you find it interesting. Um, of course, there's been uh, lots of things that done, like uh, uh, a particular researcher called Dr. Melba Kitchen. Uh, she's a big foot, foot researcher, and she uses, she thinks they use these as markers or messages or symbols uh, to, to mark their territory. She also uh, has contracted DNA, and there's been several uh, researchers who've had found DNA, and um, the DNA most of the time comes back either you can't figure out what it is or it's a cross between a human and something else. So somewhere along the line they think maybe that humans did breed with these things. Uh, in an article posted on Bigfoot and Beyond, uh, Cryptozoology and Paranormal Research, uh, this, uh, they say describing these street structures and their possible meanings, upside down hangars that are one to ten feet long are found in trees uh, above the buck rubs, the deer beds, and the deer paths where the deer is in activity. They end up ripping off and they indicate the travel pattern of the deer. So they think they're, they're marking deer territory, which is, would be one of the, their food sources. Bigfoot uses a two foot uh, stick broke at both ends and place it within 20 feet radius of a hunter's blind. So maybe they're marking our hunter's blinds that they see. During hunter season, they say they're, they're not to be seen anywhere. Bigfoot places logs and trees sideways at the edge of their woods that lead to human areas. Bigfoot places trees at a 45 degree angle facing into the woods as a signal to retreat there, or they will be leaning uh, a tree facing outwards indicating it's safe. X structure indicates a direction of travel. So a lot of researchers will see those X's that are suspended in midair and start to follow those. Uh, an article called Bigfoot Twig Symbols says that uh, a lot of these tree structures could be messaged to other to show the clan's territory markers. An attempt to communicate with each other or perhaps they want to communicate with us also maybe a marker for food or food sources and a warning uh, might be a spir spiritual mar marking recall where they went or where they were going nobody really knows but i thought i'd give this to you just to ponder over maybe do some of your own research on bigfoot There's a lot of stuff on the web folks i'll be right back You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The number here is 877-927-6648. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, genetically modified crops. And I found an article here from the New York Times. And uh, the picture shown on the telestrator here is uh, Amand uh, Russo. He's a sixth-generation farmer. Uh, in France that 20 years ago Europe uh, largely rejected GMO foods and uh, at the same time that the United States and Canada were kind of embracing and of course we know that uh, one of the things that, uh, for GM crops is that uh, it promises a real bounty of a lot of food well, in other words we cannot make enough food so we have to genetically uh, change the food so we can make more of it and it's going to be healthier for us and uh, it, it's going to allow us to have enough food and I don't really believe in that theory I think there's enough food on the planet for everybody I think uh, basically people who are starving we send them bad food we send them uh, most of the food that I don't eat and we don't really send them the good food at all and I think there's plenty of uh, food uh, available for everybody. It's just the type of food that we're giving people is not really good. Um, the controversy over genetically modified crops have longly focused largely on unsustainable fears that they are unsafe to eat. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, th things, you know, we've been doing a lot of things to plants for eons. And I think just because we change a plant doesn't necessarily make it unhealthy, but I think when you start sticking pesticides and things in it, then that naturally, the pesticides itself is, is there as part of their DNA now, and I think that is bad for us. But the real promise uh, of genetic modification was twofold, by making cro crops immune to the effect of weed killers and inherently resistant to many pests, they would grow so robustly that they, they would become in uh, indispensable to feeding the world's population we have more than enough if we're doing it and uh, also the promise is that uh, if we use this type of plant that we're going to reduce the incidence of spraying uh, the uh, the insecticides so we won't have to spray them so 20 years ago Europe largely rejected the GM crops and at the same time Canada and the United States were embracing it we compare the results of the two continents and there's a chart up here on the telestrator which I'll bring up and the chart shows you here that the GMOs not being used in Europe and the tonnage and then the GMO used crops in Canada. This one just is in Canada, but basically this is in 1995 when the North America started using them. And you can see the rise is a little bit slower than the rise of normal foods. So 
this analysis by the Times using the United Nations data shows the United States and Canada have gained no discernible advantage in yields, food per acre, when measured against Western Europe, a region uh, with comparably modernized agriculture producers like France and Germany. Also, a recent National Academy of Science reports found that there is little evidence that the introduction of genetically modified crops in the United States has led to yield gains beyond those seen in conventional crops. At the same time, herbicide use increased in the United States even as major crops like corn, soybeans, cotton have been converted to the modified variety. And the United States has fallen behind Europe's biggest producer, France, in reducing overall use of pesticides, which includes the herbicides and the insecticides. One measure contained in data from the United States Geological Survey shows the stark difference in the use of pesticides. Since genetically modified crops were introduced in the United States two decades ago for crops like corn, cotton, and soybeans, the use of toxins that kill insects and fungi has fallen by a third, but the spraying of herbicides have been used much higher volumes has risen to about 21%. So some of the pesticides are being used less and the herbicides are used even more. Uh, by contrast, France, uh, the use of pesticides and fungicides has fallen by a far greater percentage, 65%, and herbicides has also increased as well by about 36%. Profound difference over genetic uh, engineering has split Americans and Europeans for decades. Although American protests as, as far back as 1987 pulled up uh, prototype uh, potato plants, uh, European anger at the idea of fooling with nature has been far more so sustained. In the last few years, the march against Monsanto has drawn thousands of protesters in cities like Paris, Basel, Switzerland and uh, opposition to GM foods is the foundation of the green political movement. Still, Europeans eat those foods when they buy imported stuff from us, of course. So fears about the harmful effects of eating GM uh, whole foods have proven to be largely without scientific basis, they say. The potential harm is from the pesticides. Uh, has drawn the attention of most scientists. Pesticides are toxic by designs. Weaponized version like sarin, which was developed by the Nazi Germany, has been linked to development delays and cancer. These chemicals are largely unknown. So we really haven't done a lot of research on a lot of these pesticides over long-term effects, and especially when they're inside the food. It's much harder, I think, to do testing. But I noticed that uh, the Russians have done quite a bit of uh, GMO testing, especially with rats, and they find that most of the symptoms that uh, come about come into the first generation a little bit, a lot more in the second, third, and fourth generations. And of course, when we look at what's really happening, so we've been at this for about 20 years here in the United States, so we probably are just starting to see, probably the 30-year mark, we'll start to see what changes in our species take place with the younger people just starting to grow up into adolescence and uh, that next generation who may have been fed exclusively on GMO foods in many cases will start to show and we'll find out what it is that, that's happening there. Uh, Monsanto says while overall herbicide use may be increasing in some areas where farmers are following the best practice to manage and the emerging weed issues, farmers in other areas with different circumstances may have decreased and maintained their herbicide usage. So they do uh, counter with a uh, little propaganda there. Um, you know, Europe is really, uh, I think, on the forefront of doing this, and also India has pretty much banned GMO crops. So more of the world is getting rid of these things, while in the United States, who supposedly we have the best food in the world, is uh, we're kind of embracing this. My answer to the whole thing is, and I was talking to somebody the other day about this, that uh, we really need, we know for a fact that wild food is healthier than domesticated food. We know that wild animals are healthier than domesticated if they're able to eat their own natural food that would, they would normally find in a wild area. So to me, this should be the basis for our understanding of food and how uh, we get food. The wild areas are the prime locations where we need to keep them wild. So we need to be expanding our wild areas and allowing hunters and people who forage into these areas on a continuous basis. 
uh, we know that top predators are really highly essential to the health of the planet. This was proven when the wolves were reintroduced in, uh, into Yellowstone. Not only did, did, uh, did the caribou uh, do better, but the plants, all the other species did better. And there's a whole scientific uh, theory behind this that the predators keep everything in line. Uh, and I'll uh, expand on this so, uh, during the next section. Folks, please pick up our Health Signals newsletter. Got a beautiful issue out here right now. Got it working on the next one coming out. And please pick up our Primal Edge, our daily one-shot wonder. Number here is 877-927-6648. I should be back in a couple minutes. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. Located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage, you can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com Educating Investors. Join John Logan as he teaches you trading techniques utilizing the Taz Profile Scanner, the Global Market Pulse, next on TFNN. And welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, I forgot to show you this, too, because uh, I wanted to give you some idea. Uh, just because G uh, you know, we're gen genetically modifying these crops doesn't mean that they're all unhealthy, but for sure the ones with the pesticides are. Uh, I don't think we really have a definite answer of the ones that don't have the pesticides in it. But just to give you an idea how outrageous some of the amounts of pesticides that ends up in the food here, uh, the, uh, the, the real low exposure of point, uh, 0 0.1 parts per million of glyphosate is considered uh, a dangerous level. And many foods are found to have a lot more than that. If we look on this chart, and the good thing is, is in our diet here at uh, Primal Lifestyle, none of these foods are really what we eat anyway. So 
that is the good part. But if you take a look at like Cheerios, they found 1,125.3 parts per million. In uh, Cheerios with the honey nut, 670.2 parts per million. Uh, Wheaties, 31.2. These are really extremely high. Kellogg's Corn Flake, Raisin Bran, Kashi, Special K. All these things have an enormous amount of glyphosate and other things in them. Uh, here's some other ones. Uh, Oreo cookies, uh, Lay's potato chips, Doritos, Fritos. You can see these are all foods that, are, of course, are highly processed foods. So you're going to find all these uh, GMO products uh, are going to be foods that we don't typically eat on the primal lifestyle type of diets. So that's really the good news, is we stay away from those things. But I know the kids and the, at school, they're fixing all these kinds of foods. And you've got to be aware that these things are filled with pesticides. And to date, we should be concerned about it. There's a, lots of independent research that shows you that the childhood cancer rate is steadily rising. And remember, I said we're just coming into the generation where these kids are being born and now they're uh, less than 30 years old and maybe eating right from day one a lot of these foods. So I'd be concerned if I was a parent. So I really would recommend staying away from not only these types of foods, but anything that may have uh, been genetically modified. Why not eat what nature intends to eat? It just makes a lot of sense to me. So during the holidays is a time when we're likely eat different food. Uh, we're going to different parties. You have different kinds of dinners. That's what the holidays are about, having food with friends and uh, business acquaintances, perhaps. So uh, be wise. Don't fall for the trap. Don't start eating these foods. Stick with really, really good foods. If you're going out to a restaurant, stick with the protein and stick with the green vegetables and don't buy the processed uh, plates that they're showing there. You're going to be a lot better off. It'll, it'll avoid a lot of uh, the extra stress that the holiday already brings just by being around your close family again. Uh, it's, the tensions are usually a little bit, a little bit higher. Uh, so if you want to be the mellow one in the room, pay attention to the food. That's what I do. I think it's really important that everything starts with the food. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's physical activity, you want to lose weight, you just want to be healthier, you want to be a little more stress-free, it starts with the food. Believe me, uh, it's, we have enough stresses in our modern society, a lot more, I think, uh, these days than we've ever had in our life. So you start with the food, and the rest of your life, I think, falls into place a lot easier. So uh, start your morning off by right. You know, I, this morning I had a couple of eggs. I had a little sausage with sage in it. Uh, it was quite tasty. Uh, you, uh, last night I, I just had bacon and eggs for uh, dinner. My wife was at a meeting, and I didn't feel like fixing a whole bunch of things. And I said, uh, bacon and eggs, it is. So sometimes I have it in the morning, sometimes I have it at night. It's all good. Great stuff. Thanks a lot for sticking around, folks. Uh, Paige will be back on the next show, I'm sure. I hope she's feeling better. Uh, see you later, babe. And uh, to my wife, I'll see you too. I love you. Bye. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.